Good to um, welcome you all here. We have a, a fairly lengthy agenda today, and um, so we're going to go ahead and, and get started. And I'd like uh, to begin uh, to, by introducing, Susan, you want to come up, um, introducing the uh, <clears throat> person who will become the city's new uh, director of community development. Uh, Susan Crotty uh, will be joining the administration on uh, November 28th, uh, just a couple days before um, uh, Amy Odom uh, retires from the position uh, on November 30. So it would get a little bit of an overlap, um, not much, uh, but hopefully it'll, it'll help in the transition process. Um, I want to mention that um, <clears throat> Susan has more than uh, 20 years experience in community and economic development. She's presently the industrial and community development manager for the city of St. Mary's, Ohio, and has previously served in similar positions uh, with the city of Pickerington and the Columbus Urban Growth Corporation. Um, she has also worked as the deputy director of the Office of Workforce Development for the Ohio Department of Jobs and Family Services. Um, Ms. Crowdy has a, a BA in economics from the Ohio State University, and she is also a certified economic developer uh, through the International Economic Development Council. And um, it's been, uh, as we went through the process, uh, good, to be, good to know that we could uh, find someone who has uh, her training, her background, her experience, um, and uh, the fact that she's familiar with um, uh, this region of the state, um, also with uh, many state and federal programs, is important as we try to keep the momentum of, uh, of the Department of Community Development uh, moving forward. So, uh, Susan, I'd like to welcome you Thank and you. Uh, glad to have you make some comments. I'm sure. Well, um, I'm really excited to be here. I was uh, very happy to be selected for the position. Uh, I know I have very big shoes to fill. I know Amy's going to be missed, uh, but I did just meet with staff, and you know there's a great group of people there to work with. So uh, I'm sure it'll be a smooth transition, and I know Amy is you know there to help as well. Um, so I'm anxious to get started. Um, uh, as the mayor mentioned, I did work for uh, a nonprofit in the Columbus area that did uh, urban revitalization projects in the Central City neighborhoods of Columbus, and I have to say that was. You know, one of my favorite things that I ever did. Uh, I love working in the neighborhoods, and um, you know, I think you really only get into public service if you want to make a difference in the community. And uh, so I'm anxious to do that here. I'm happy to start soon, and uh, you know, look forward to seeing all of you again. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. There are some other city employees that want to meet you, so before, you're not going, they're not going to let you get out the door without shaking hands. So good, good to have you here. Also this morning, uh, we have representatives here from uh, downtown Lima uh, to uh, invite up uh, Bob Cook and, and Aubrey Kay for proclamation um, regarding Small Business Saturday and other representatives. Who'd like to take the lead? Aubrey. Downtown Lima each year has um, celebrated Small Business Saturday, um, which is always the, the day after Black Friday. And this year, we have always done a shopping pass. And we have um, expanded this to be a small business shopping pass um, that is now going to be announced today, obviously. And it will run through today through December 17th. So what we want is people to come to our small businesses downtown to shop local for Christmas and for the holidays, I do it all year round, but especially now, but we have a small business shopping pass where that people can go from business to business. There are 15 of the downtown businesses listed in here. 
Um, it's kind of a scavenger hunt, but you go and receive a sticker from each of the businesses. And when you're finished, you fill it out, put your name on it, turn it in. And then we will draw on December 19th for three winners for three different gift baskets. Um, and one will be valued at $250. The second prize is $150. And the third prize is $100. So all those will be items from our downtown retailers and our businesses. So we're, we're proud to show them off and um, encourage everybody to shop local and shop small during the holidays, that the money stays right here in the community. <laughs> Just that it's, you know, it's really exciting to have downtown Lima support um, and the community support because as we know, small businesses can be on a national scale and a worldwide scale. So um, I'm really excited to have this kind of a promotion that really encourages people to shop locally since more of the tax revenue then stays in the area. Let me, uh, in that context, offer the following proclamation. Whereas there are currently 28.8 million small businesses in the United States, representing 99.7% of all businesses in the country, and they are responsible for 63% of net new jobs created over the past 20 years. And whereas small businesses employ over 49% of all businesses with employees in the United States. Whereas 89% of consumers the United States agree that small businesses contribute positively to the local community by supplying jobs, generating tax revenue, and serving as resources for local communities. And whereas 87% of consumers in the United States agree that small businesses are critical to the overall economic health and well-being of our communities. Whereas the large majority of consumers in the United States agree that it is important for people to support small businesses that they value in their community. Now, therefore, I, David J. Berger, Mayor of the City of Lima, do hereby proclaim November 26 as Small Business Saturday in our community and ask all citizens to support small businesses and merchants in, on Small Business Saturday and in our downtown and throughout the year. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused to be affixed the seal of the City of Lima this day of November 2016. So, good luck with your efforts. And it's important to uh, call attention and these special promotions are good, good incentive for folks to pay attention. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, Kirk Niemeyer is here, along with, I think, some others to, for an announcement about a special award that the city is receiving as a result of um, work that uh, a whole set of stakeholders are involved in. So, Kirk? Um, <laughs> uh, yes, we uh, have a great announcement here um, due to the uh, efforts for a very long time from various different organizations, but is anybody here from LPD from the education? You can come on up, Chief, if you'd like. Um, but uh, today at uh, 9 o'clock, the League of American Bicyclists was going to make the announcement that Lima um, received the bronze uh, for the um, being a bike-friendly community. So I'm going to more or less act on their behalf and, and, and read the award here. Um, but we weren't allowed to make the announcement until uh, after they did, so we're, uh, we're only an hour behind them roughly so um, thank you mayor uh, thank you to mayor Berger the Lima Police Department the Allen County bike and pedestrian task force Allen County Public Health activate Allen County and the Lima Allen County Regional Planning Commission and of course you the cyclists of Lima for all that you do all you're doing for bicyclists <clears throat> the League of American Bicyclists Founded in 1880 to advocate for better roads for bicycling, represents the nation's 57 million cyclists and its mission to lead the movement to create a bicycle-friendly American for everyone. Uh, the Bicycle Friendly Community Program is revolutionized, revolutionizing the way communities evaluate their quality of life, sustainability, and transportation needs while allowing them to benchmark their progress toward improving their bicycle friendliness. Since 2002, the program has accepted over 870 applications for the designation, and there are currently 408 <coughs> bicycle-friendly communities in the 50 states. 
Uh, the program emphasizes that bicycling is a simple solution to many of the challenges we face in our country. <clears throat> As Lima residents know well, bicycling is about mobility, sustainability, health, and so much more. Bicycle-friendly communities are great places, places to live, work, and visit. As Lima and the rest of the team here will certainly tell you, applying for the bicycle-friendly community designation is no small endeavor. And thanks to Josh with um, Activate Allen County, Shell Miller with uh, uh, Allen County Health Department, and LPD, it was a team effort. Uh, big, long, involved application, but we, we got it in. We got it in on time. And uh, so thanks to everyone as well as Regional Planning Commission. Um, the League was impressed with many aspects of Lima's efforts to build a world-class, bicycle-friendly community. The great people um, pushing to make Lima a community that actively welcomes cycling of all kinds. The Ottawa River Bikeway, the Bicycle Youth Education by the Lima Police Department, other Allen County agencies, so that's all the bike rodeos we hold, um, going out to public schools and um, for different schools for that matter and doing bicycle education and safety city um, it all counts uh, towards uh, this award shared lanes and bicycle lanes and the neighborhood connector routes connecting our schools and parks and of course the great support from mayor Berger, Lima police department allen county bike and pedestrian task force allen county public health johnny appleseed metro park district and the lima allen county regional planning commission and its citizens on behalf of the League of American Bicyclists, I'm pleased to present the Lima with the Bronze Bicycle Friendly Community Award. Congratulations. So um, there's no other cities in Ohio that have anything higher than Bronze. Um, I have some handouts here, but uh, it shows uh, kind of where we have to go in the future to, if we want to obtain a silver. But uh, it gets harder and harder as you uh, move up the ladder there. So. I think it's a great designation. It's certainly when people are um, uh, visiting uh, different cities in Ohio, it's one thing, especially bicyclists, look for. They know they can bring their bike here, um, visit, and have a good time, and, and get out on the road and enjoy themselves. So I think it's a, it's a great award for our community. And great effort. We should, we should Josh, show you any comments? I <clears throat> Um, I would like to just thank Kirk. Uh, I think he uh, didn't uh, recognize himself the way that he uh, deserves. Um, he did a lot of work to put this together, as well as Monica Harnish from the Health Department. I think both of them did a lot of work putting this application together. But it's really just uh, something that is great for Lima. And, uh, you know, like Kirk said, we have a lot of work to keep uh, doing. And hopefully someday we'll, we will uh, make that next step to silver. So thanks. Okay. Very good. And it should also be said that. Uh, Kirk models the behavior that he's now or being awarded for because he rides his bike every day into the office and and uh, really does uh, demonstrate to all of us that it's uh, it's not just for leisure it's for important transportation purposes as well so staying in shape too staying in shape <laughs> all right thank you Kirk thanks. thanks to everybody and those signs will be going up uh, these signs will we haven't decided. Okay, very good. Congratulations to everybody that contributed to the effort. It's a nice, nice acknowledgement. Uh, Chief Martin is here along with uh, Chief Vermillion. Uh, I don't know if you got any others with you, Chief, for this morning. All right, for coffee with a cop. Well, good morning. Um, we are going to be having another Coffee with a Cop this coming Saturday on North Cable Road from 10 a.m. to noon at the McDonald's uh, on North Cable. And uh, again, this is, um, we're trying to expand things a little bit to uh, generate more interest and get more people out. And so in addition to having uh, safety information uh, such as this brochure, which is very specific to holiday safety, uh, which was put together by members of our Crime Prevention Bureau uh, and then the normal representatives from various, <clears throat> excuse me, 
from various Allen County law enforcement agencies that are going to be there. Uh, we're going to try something a little bit different this time, too, and, and get the um, explore, local explorer's post uh, that is um, overseen by the Allen County Sheriff's Department. They're going to be there to put on some safety skits to try to help you get the idea of uh, how to stay safe during the holidays. Um, they're going to be putting those on at different times during that two-hour period. Uh, and it's something we're really looking forward to, but the real purpose of all of this uh, is really the, the way that it's worded uh, in the Coffee with a Cop mission statement is the mission of Coffee with a Cop is to break down the barriers between police officers and the citizens they serve by removing agendas and allowing opportunities to ask questions, voice concerns, or get to know the officers in your neighborhood. And then this morning when I was reading the Lima News, I actually was very uh, happy to see the editorial that was in this morning's Lima News. Uh, Coffee with a Cop, a great way to learn and be heard. And the way that they say it, uh, the, the author of that article, or the editorial said, a lot can be accomplished if people just sit down and talk with each other, ask questions, and then listen to the answers. It's a way of getting to know what makes the other person tick, to walk in their shoes, if you will. And that really is what Coffee with a Cop is all about. It's a chance to both be heard, but even more importantly, at least certainly from my perspective, is to be able to listen. Uh, because I know there are a lot of people in our community that have a lot of concerns uh, about crime in their neighborhoods. There are a lot of people that maybe have concerns with the way that police services are being delivered. There are a lot of people that maybe have questions that they'd really like to know the answers to, but they're just not going to pick up the call, the phone and, and call into to my office and ask to talk to me or to call into our desk office or anything to talk to them. And this gives them a, a way to come out without, obviously, out any kind of hostility. I mean, in fact, Coffee, uh, I believe uh, Jerry Lewis, uh, Family McDonald's will also be offering uh, cookies as they normally do. Um, and so in, in that kind of an atmosphere, you get a chance to just sit down with not just myself. I mean, there's going to be representatives from multiple law enforcement agencies, uh, Chief Vermillion with the uh, Marion Township Police Department. There's going to be representatives from the Ohio State Highway Patrol, the Allen County Sheriff's Department, Shawnee Township, Elida Police Department, and I believe others as well. Uh, so it, it, wherever you may live within Allen County, it gives you a chance to come out and talk to representatives uh, of the law enforcement areas that serve, or the law enforcement agencies that actually serve you. Uh, and again, I cannot step away from the mic without also thanking uh, the Lewis family, McDonald's, uh, as well as LACNIP, uh, and um, the other people and organizations that, that partner with us to help make this happen. It, it's a good event. I just, I really, really hope people take advantage of it. Uh, a lot of people are already getting into the shopping mode, so come out to one of the primary shopping areas within our county and uh, have a chance to have some free coffee, some cookies, and uh, sit down and talk with us as well. So, Chief Vermillion? I'm just looking forward to seeing everyone that comes out to see us. Thank you. Um, I guess in the context of the <clears throat> that, uh, I do want to mention because there's been uh, lots of phone calls the last week concerning uh, the presence of um, uh, protesters in the square. Uh, and this morning I had invited a gentleman to be present to uh, share their concerns. Uh, he wasn't able to make it today, but I, I do want to uh, first of all say to the community that um, as it is a matter of uh, uh, free speech that folks um, can in fact be present in public spaces um, and uh, express themselves. Uh, we have, the city has encouraged um, that the language uh, used um, be um, be modified, and we we are gaining uh, some cooperation in that regard. Um, the The expression of concern around heroin is a real concern. Last week, we had a single day in which community agencies responded to 10 overdoses. People are dying every week. 
And um, there are a couple of initiatives underway in um, December. There will be a couple of community forums uh, with mental health agencies, social service agencies, as people uh, attempt to um, develop some additional strategies. I've recently also signed on to a letter with other mayors in Ohio urging the federal government to provide the level of funding that's necessary for communities to be able to respond. There was some funding that uh, Senator Portman sought, which was a fraction of what was actually available. And so we're asking our federal legislators to um, step up. Uh, this is not something that's going to uh, um, be dealt with uh, without some additional resources, significant resources. And um, it's clearly the case that this is an epidemic, uh, not just here, but literally everywhere. Certainly Ohio must be at the, in the center of, of what's going on with uh, uh, the drugs that are flooding in and the, the incredibly tainted materials that people are putting in their bodies. So we want to ask folks to um, be aware that this is a real issue. We're asking people as they express themselves on this issue that we respect one another, uh, listen to each other, and as the chief was just saying, uh, the opportunities to engage with law enforcement and with other social service agencies I think is real, um, and everybody's looking for solutions. So we will keep working at it. This morning as well, uh, Linda Hamilton is here with West Ohio Food Bank. Thank you, Mayor. As we begin, uh, all of us are sort of preparing for Thanksgiving next week. Many of our hungry neighbors are out there not sure what they're going to be doing to put food on the table and how when kids are out of school um, and they're not a part of sort of that lunch program that they're getting food for, how they're going to be fed during that time off. So we do have some opportunities for the community to participate in some uh, distributions, as well as many of our partner agencies that are open. You can go to our new website that we just launched to be able to find out that information. But wanted to be able to share today some of the larger distributions that we'll be having in many of the communities, um, Lima as well as some others. So tomorrow we will be having a distribution from our office on East Kibbe Street from noon until two. Um, we will be able to be providing shelf-stable food. We'll have produce, protein, bread, and a variety of other foods as well. So this is a great opportunity to come. We do ask the community to please not arrive, to be respectful of those that are trying to get across on our roadways, not to line up until about 2 o'clock. We'll have the gate open. You can come into the back. And again, we've got a very organized process to ensure that everybody has uh, food as well. Additionally, this Saturday in Wapakoneta from 8 until noon, um, sponsored by the United Methodist Church at 504 Glenwood Road in Wapakoneta, there's a distribution. For Herod, Ohio, sponsored by the United Methodist Church, we have um, at, from 9 until the food is gone at 9520 Herod Road in Herod, Ohio. In Lima, on Saturday, sponsored by Crossroads, at 775 South Bayer Road. Um, they will be having a distribution from 9 until noon. And then also Saturday, in Lock Lock sponsored by Lockington um, in Sydney, Ohio, we have a distribution at 91 or 2190 Miami Conservancy Road in Sydney. And that goes until from 9 a.m. until the food is gone. Uh, also next Tuesday, thanks to the basement doctor, and Jared Pugsley that will be back from the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, they will be distributing uh, prepared meals to over 300 families just in uh, the Lima area, as well as then the West Ohio Food Bank will be bringing additional food that the box food and shelf stable that they can also take home to be able to eat as well. So there's plenty of opportunities for those that are, um, may not have food to put on the table to be able to join us in any of these events coming up. We also are sort of wrapping up 
Harvest for the Hungry that's taking place. There'll be a gathering of celebration this Sunday, uh, November 20th at 11 a.m. at Shawnee United Methodist Church. And still encourage you uh, to go to um, harvestforthehungry.net uh, to see uh, the additional opportunities on the calendar um, to go to something like Lulu's, uh, Captain D's, you know, Tom All. There's some specials that are going on there as well. And then also we have some other distributions that will be taking place in uh, December. Um, and lastly, you know, as we go into the giving spirit, you know, we many times at West Ohio Food Bank, our partner agencies, and more importantly, our clients, are the recipients of generous donors, whether it be individuals, businesses, corporations, our farmers, food, manu food manufacturers, or grocery stores. So we would just like to thank all of you for your help and support that you've given to the community to be able to, to ensure that people are not going hung hungry in our neighborhoods. And lastly, uh, you know, no gift is too small. We had last week, there was a, a family that came in, and that happens this time of year. People come in and bring food donations um, as well as financial donations. And here it was a four-year-old boy who went to his parents, uh, was watching something on television, and really became inspired to ask his uh, neighbors and family to be able to provide food donations. So we are grateful for parents who encourage and support um, innovative thinking and ideas for their young kids and are really thankful um, for everyone for just the support that you have of the West Ohio Food Bank. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And you do have um, ACERT out. Oh, yes. They're going to yes, be managing have, yes, the traffic. Yes, ACERT manages traffic, correct. Okay. We've done very well. We, we had a huge traffic jam yes, a couple months time. ago. Uh, around this uh, yeah. distribution, we want people to pay attention to the yes. to the direction they're given as they're arriving for this. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, Joe Patton and Paula Siebenek are here from Ohio Means Jobs with an update on uh, job availability. Good morning. Good morning. I wanted to open with uh, recognizing that November is Hire a Vet Month, so we wanted to. Definitely promote that to any veterans out there that want to come down to Ohio Means Jobs. Veterans get preference on any of our openings. They're always at the top of the list whenever we're doing a job search on Ohio Means Jobs or an employer's doing a search. So we definitely wanted to highlight that service to all of our veterans and get that out there to them. And I'll let Paula talk about some of our current openings. Okay, so we have 1,300 jobs in the Lima-Allen County area currently open. I know that's hard to believe, but um, I just did the numbers today. And that is a variety of jobs. Um, just to let you know about the career education level, about 44% of those jobs um, are high school diploma or equivalent. 16% uh, are less than a high, high school degree, meaning that it's probably for high school students or, you know, as companies are gearing up for the holiday season. 12% um, require associate degrees and 10% require bachelor's degree degrees. And then any sort of occupations, we have first line supervisors, registered nurse, nurses, security guards, uh, truck drivers, so just a variety. But I just wanted to highlight um, some main ones that we have here in the Lima Allen County area. Um, the I side of Lima has some patient manager positions open, um, corrections officers for the Allen County Sheriff's Office, uh, the Corrections Division, uh, a part-time nurse at the Allen County Sheriff's Office Medical Division, um, the Allen um, County Water District has an administrator position open, and Husky is um, hiring refinery process operators. So that's just naming a few, so if you know of anybody that's looking for a job, please refer them to go to www.ahamiesjobs.com. And if there's and also, if you know of someone who's looking for a job, or if you're looking for a job, you can come down to our office or call, and you are assigned to a personal job coach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the update. I keep saying uh, this is truly the strongest economy in our region for the last uh, 30 years. Uh, there's plenty of opportunity at the in, throughout the range of uh, of um, uh, uh, employment opportunities from the very unskilled uh, to the very skilled and we want to encourage people to take advantage of the services that uh, 
uh, are available at Ohio Means Jobs. It's a great network. Uh, Joe, how many companies are now listing their jobs? Uh, we just uh, started with around 40 back in 2013. We just passed the 300 mark. Uh, companies using us as well as their HR it, it used to be the case that not many folks were posting their jobs uh, with, uh, with the agency, and now we've gone from 40 to over 300 in the last two and a half years. I, th I think it's a great resource that people just need to know is, is there and available. So thank you. Um, Warner Roach is also here with an update and a map. Um, we, we started, as you know, on Monday with our leaf pickup, and uh, it's come on up, Warner. Yeah. So if you want to talk to us about where we're at and where we're going. Thank you, Mayor. As promised, we um, said we were going to do weekly updates on where we are with the leaf collection. And so I have good news. Um, we're proud to announce that the leaf pickup program is progressing through the first. Let's turn around just a little bit, Mr. Mayor. Through the first, uh, fourth, and the sixth wards. And we, the pickup is complete in the fifth ward. So we color code these so you can get a visual. Uh, so that would be the fifth ward here. So we're still working on the first, fourth, and, and sixth. Um, crews will be moving into the second, third, and seventh ward as they advance. And we do anticipate going into these wards late this week and early next week. Um, so with that said, we need to do some reminders for folks as we come into your wards um, to rake and pile your leaves to the curb lawn and not in the street, okay? And there's a reason for that. So a couple of helpful hints. Please bag any small accumulation of leaves that you may have um, with the leaf bags that are available through the City of Lama residents at no cost to you. Um, place them out with the regular trash per the city contract. Two, rake all the leaves to the curb lawn, not in the street. You can hear me repeat that several times, not in the street. Our crews have the equipment to rake them from the, the curb lawn. We have these neat rakes that, that pull them away. Um, and when leaves are raked into the streets, the vehicles break them down, and this creates problems with our pickup, creates safety hazards. Um, children playing in the streets can't be noticed with large piles of leaves. Um, bad things can happen. They're not noticeable by the drivers. They plug up our drains. Um, so there's lots and lots and lots of reasons not to break them in the streets. We want them on the curb lawn, please. Make sure all piles of leaves are free of rocks <coughs> and junk and grass clippings and limbs and other debris so that we can expedite our, our pickup. Um, we had an example yesterday. Some stuff was stored in leaves as we took the machine, the loader, to, to collect the leaves, and it went through that machine and came out like a rocket. Um, luckily, nobody was injured, um, but it's very important that we make sure that we actually send our people through the leaves to make sure nothing's there. And you wouldn't believe the stuff we found raked up with the leaves, so I can't stress enough. Um, make sure it's just leaves in the piles when, when you do it as we come to these next wards. And then lastly, uh, uh, large amounts of tree and leaf debris can be taken to the compost facility located at 1227 East Hanthorne Road. Residents will need to bring the water bill um, to access that facility, the compost facility. Okay. And as promised, we're going to continue to give you weekly updates or update you whenever we can on, on the leaf pickup because it's getting ready to get cold and there's a whisper of snow and in, in the very near future. So uh, with that, Mr. Mayor, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. And I believe that is all that we have uh, for this morning. I want to thank everybody for your attendance and we'll break down for individual interviews. Thank you.